what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Talk Box. Check it out. You need to like, subscribe, and catch a YouTube family and YouTube world, I am back. First of all, I gotta say this because you know my boy, my 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 brother, my producer of the whole thing. He always say, make sure I do this. So please go and like, subscribe to the page. Please go like and subscribe to the page. Please go like and subscribe to the page. Please go like and subscribe to the page. One more time, right? One more time for. Her. Please go and like and subscribe to the page. That's five times. I was told I don't say it enough. He wants me to do it five times coming in and five times going. Is that good, Mayo? Is that perfect. good? Beautiful. Give me a stand ovation for that. <laughs> First of all, man, I want to thank everybody for being here. Hope everyone is well and blessed. And um, I'm so and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'm, I think I'm so thankful for you guys hanging out with me in, in, in these segments of our conversations. I'm so glad you're here today because I got a real one. I got a real one. I got a real one. I can't say that enough. And this is my brother. I haven't known him long, but I've known him over maybe about two or three years. And man, this has been nothing but a real true brotherhood with this brother. I'm learning about him. Uh, he's a very, very um, young, powerful dude right now that's doing his thing that I just love watching what he does. And I'm sure you guys don't even realize how you guys watch what he do because he's kind of a behind the scene kind of guy. But today he's hanging out with me on my platform so I can have him over here so y'all can meet him, hear his story, love on him just for a little bit. Not going to keep him long because he's very busy. Brother, y'all show your love. For my partner, my brother, this incredible brother, talented brother, give it up for Isaac Taylor. Isaac, what's up? We're live. That, 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 that was for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Thank you, DOA, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Um, like I said, we haven't known, known, known each other long, but we've known each other long enough. And I would honestly say, not to skip ahead and stuff, but just meeting you for the first time. And you know, putting you sitting you sitting you down that chair interviewing you. <laughs> Tables turn. <laughs> Tables turn. <laughs> Tables turn, Isaac. It's my turn, man. It's my turn. First of all, man, let me let me tell the whole the whole platform and the whole world and the YouTube world that this brother is the creator, the producer, the director of this of this thing for and he's gonna tell you all exactly his how many hats he wears, but for the hit TV show, Unsung on TV One, I got the producer, the man sitting behind the man, next to the man, in front of the man, that's that's uh, that's driving the car to the episodes, a lot of episodes, or most, we're going to find out, for the Unsung, he's a for TV producer, he's a, uh, he's a film, film producer, he's just an incredible brother, so I we met... Um, when when they did the episode on Chucky Booker, and I didn't know, you know, this is my first time doing it, and you know, I didn't know what it was, and and I had a chance to meet this this brother uh, on the set of the unsung with a uh, 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 segment with Chucky Booker that we did, and uh, man, like you said, we've been really 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 good friends since, man, and uh, brother Isaac, tell me about Isaac Taylor, man. So first of all, where are you from, brother? Oh, man. <laughs> Born in Texas, raised in L.A. slash Compton. Um, so I've been I've been I'm pretty much from Compton. Yeah, I was raised in Compton with the high school, with the elementary junior high school, high school in Compton, graduated from Centennial High School in Compton, uh, played basketball. Uh, basketball was my goal, you know, growing up, you know, that, you know, that saying uh, either you play sports or you gangbang. You know, I play sports, you know, and I was able to use basketball as my outlet to not get caught up in, you know, a lot of things that stereotypes would think yeah. someone like me and the way I look coming from Compton would get involved with. Uh, so basketball, that was that was my thing, man. And I went to school for sociology and criminal justice. So entertainment and film was not even on my radar. Um, it just just so happened that I needed to get a job because I was doing a lot of tryouts 
for basketball and it just wasn't paying the bills, you know. So I had to get a job and I got a job as a security guard, but I always said that because I wanted something flexible so I could continue doing these basketball tryouts, you know, so I wanted something that wasn't as important as a nine to five corporate job or a job that really needed me to be there. So I got a security job, but little did I know that I was getting a security slash bodyguard job that catered to celebrities and, you know, shows and films. So I got this job and they say, no, I'm on set, you know, uh, bodyguard Judge Judy. <laughs> and so I was Judge Judy security and bodyguard. And I just remember just being there and being on set and seeing all these moving pieces move around. And I was like, okay, that's the producer. That's the cameraman. That's the, or he always had one to suit. What does he do? Okay, that's the director. Oh, that's the executive producer. So I started paying attention, you know, and watching what everyone was doing and started talking to people. And with my mindset of I can do anything, I started to realize that, okay, this is something that I might want to do. And then I realized the money they was making. Because at first it was like, I don't care about TV. But then I was like, I need to make more money. So I need a better job. I need to do something that can make more money. So then I went to Judge Judy and the staff. I was like, hey, I would like to apply for a different position, maybe a production assistant, something I can do other than security guard. And with their blessing, I got hired as a production assistant, which for people who don't know, that's like the bottom of the bottom. That's the, that's the, that's the entry level position in TV and production. You know, you're the runner, you're the gopher, go get the water, go get the coffee, go get donuts, clean that up, you know, carry this. So that was me. And I did that for a couple of months. But what they didn't know is I already knew everyone else's position. <laughs> they just didn't know that, you know. So when I got there and I saw a position open up, I would go and apply for that position. They was like, well, you only been here two or three months. I said, I know, but I know how to do this job. Just give me an opportunity, give me a chance. And then I got that chance. And I got, became an associate producer. And then I went over to Judge Joe Brown, the Judge Joe Brown court show. I don't know if you remember that court show. Of course. Judge Joe Brown. Of course. I got, went over there and I got hired as a producer. And from that point on, I got, I got the, I was like, man, I think I can do this. You know, my, my basketball wasn't doing what it, I thought it would do at the time. And even my buddies that were still doing the tryouts, they wasn't making the money. And, you know, so I was like, I need, I need something more consistent. You know, I had a son, I had a son very young, and I said, I need to do something consistent so I can take care of me and my son. So that's when I started taking producing seriously. And once I took it seriously, I realized that the creative I had in sports, I was able to apply that in TV. So I became, you know, you know, more fluent in writing. My writing got better. I wasn't a good writer, you know. I went, I went to public school, I wasn't a good writer, you know, but when I got to TV and production, I started writing a lot more. I started writing voiceovers. I started writing scripts. I started writing call sheets and shot lists. And my writing got better. My spelling got better. And I was like, well, shit. I said, okay, now, now I got a consistent check. I got benefits. And now I'm meeting all these people. And from that point on, I was like, okay, I mastered core TV. I want to do something different. You know, what can I do different? And then I went and did a talk show. Then I went and did a reality show. Then I moved to New York and tripled my tripled my rate. I tripled my worth, I should say, because New York paid a lot more and they wanted me to come there and help start start and run a new show. So I left California, went to New York, and my my, my rate tripled, my value was raised, and now I was like, shit, I'm now I'm a producer, producer. You know what I'm saying? Now people are calling, wanting me to come work for them. And they now have a track record. My resume speaks for itself. You know, so then I was like, okay, now this is this, I guess this is where I belong. I still play ball. I would play in the summer league. Like people who play ball know about the Drew League, the summer league and the Drew. That's like one of the best um, summer pro leagues in the country, you know. And I still I still held my talent there because I love basketball. So I was still playing and competing against NBA players and overseas players and college players. And then after that weekend, I'll go right back to work in TV, you know? So I just, I did that and I, you know, and speed things up. The biggest decision I made was taking a lower position, lower rate after I had climbed to the top. I'm at the top now and taking a job over at TV One's Unsung. They had no producer positions open. They only had associate producers. 
I haven't been an associate producer in over 10 years. I was past that level. I wasn't above that level, but I was past that level. Because I was already a producer, a senior producer, and I was making all this money. And now you tell me I got to take a, a, a downgrade and position and take a pay cut. But what I did was I didn't know documentary. I had resumes from court, talk, uh, clip shows, reality shows. Um, I even did a game show, mainly for a game show. But I never had documentary. And I love music. So I was like, wait, wait. So you mean to tell me I can go over here and do a documentary? I can learn about music. I can learn about these artists and tell, help tell their stories. But I'm not making as much money. So, man, when I tell you, I took that position. And my first, very first episode was Gil Scott Heron. I don't know if you know who that is, but <laughs> I didn't know who it was. I mean, I knew I knew the phrase, the, the revolution would not be televised. And that's all I knew, but I didn't know who said it. I didn't know this this poet. I didn't know this godfather of rap they labeled him. But I, I mean, I'll tell you, that was my first, very first episode. And just because I had it right in front of me, that very first episode earned me this. My very first NAACP Image Award. And I, I hold this dearly, like it's, I mean, I never got one, but I don't know I can win like that, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not used to winning like that, you know. And I took I took pride in that in that work I've done because it it was that was that was a time when the NAACP Image Awards would take only one episode and they would vote. Now they just vote as a whole show in general. But that year, they took one episode out of all the episodes we produced, out of all the episodes, and it was Gil Scott Heron episode that was put in the hat to be voted on and it won and I was a part of that and I stayed there a year I went back to my job at CBS you know and then I came back to Unsung as a producer now I'm back as a producer writer so now I did I did I put in the work you know put in the work for that year as an associate producer I left and went back to my other job because I just needed more money but then I was able they saw they saw my work you know so I respect TV One, um, Ace, Ace Method Co. Productions, uh, and my boss, Keisha, who saw the work in me to bring me back as a producer. And when I tell you, man, I mean, from producing True to R uh, Next to Will Downing, Kenny Lattimore, Christopher Williams, Peaches and Herb, um, Chucky Booker, the R&B group Black. I mean... It's, 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 it's a blessing, man. You know, I know I know people say these things, and I mean, and my mom reminds me every every day how blessed I am, and I and I, and I don't sit back and take it in because I don't. I think this is just what I'm supposed to do, you know. But the joy I get in telling people's stories and the the you know the information that I get from it, I learn. And to this day, I'm still cool with a lot of people. I'm cool with you. I'm cool with Chucky. I'm cool with Will Downey, Kenny Lattimore. Like and it's not, it's not, and it's not just the work relationship; it's the personal relationships I'm able to build, you know. And also to be able to talk about these artists and their music, and to bring my mom in, you know, what I'm saying like I don't know if she was a Chucky Booker fan until we got to the rap party, the screener, and she was all like, she's like, son, I want to meet Chucky. I was like, why, <laughs> you know? But you know, and she's a Will Downey fan. Like I, I would take her to a Will Downey concert. And Will Downey to this day will face. I will Facetime with Will Downey on my mom's birthday. He was saying happy birthday to my mom. You know, so it's things like that, like the awards. Nothing, nothing come close to putting a smile on my mom's face. You know, and and it's and this show is loved around the world. You know, we, we get millions and millions of views on our episodes. Um, and you talk about creating uh, the work I've done with Unsung and what I learned from Unsung and that blueprint. I was able to take that and put my own twist on it and create an, another docu-series called A Closer Look. That's the one I created, and that's on All Black and We TV. And I took the concept of unsung with storytelling and I applied it and just kind of flipped the roles. You know, I made it more so about, you know, the current day with the flashback being, you know, brought up later instead of the flashback and the legacy being talked about first, you know, I want to get, the, I wanted people to know what the artist was doing today, you know, whether it was family, new music, entrepreneurship. So I took that concept and I twisted it. And my first season, I had Ralph Transvant from New Edition, Brian McKnight, Eric Benet, Anthony Hamilton, Marcia Ambrosia, and Trina. So that was my first, that was my first six episodes. 
and it's doing well. It's doing pretty good, man. So that show I created, that has my stamp all over it. But it comes from my roots of producing Unsigned. So that was my quick journey with Unsigned. <laughs> Man, man, I, brother, you just don't know how I appreciate that. And I can tell you do this for a living because, <laughs> do you brilliant. I'm, see, I got to take some pointers. I'm going to be calling you. Hey, man, okay, so I got this thing. You got to give me some pointers. Dude, you, you, you're the bomb at it, man. So you're the bomb at it. But, but um, it's just, just to know these things about you um, that we, you know, we never discussed. And, uh, bruh, it's very, very, you're right, man. You're blessed. It's a blessing. It's very impressive. Um, and the, and your reason and your hustle, man, and your thought process, your forward thinking through the whole thing, man, mm. just incredible, man. And, you know, at your young age and you still, um, you know, you still, your brain is still going, man. It's still trying to figure it out, man. You're not, you no know, sleep, and, man. <laughs> and, but I appreciate that so much, man, from you. Um, so wh who, how do you determine well, like who would be uh, like a good artist or actor or like who would make a good story how do you determine that for unsung okay i'll give you a good example and not to keep going back to chucky but chucky is a perfect example of an artist literally people the fans wanted us to do chucky for the longest time i mean when we had when i did the troop episode and chucky came and interviewed about you know working with troop i mean the the response were Where's Chucky? Why can't you guys have it? I mean, every year, someone every someone always hits us up. And I think I'm the one of the only few of producers that will respond back to the fans. Because I like I, I like what they're saying sometimes, and then sometimes they be kind of over-exaggerating some artists, but it's like, eh. Uh, but Chucky Booker name always came up. So what I did was, when it came up again, I was like, you know what? For some reason, the powers that be don't really see what this guy has done and is still doing and to give you a little standard, when we do an unsung episode, what people don't understand is the show is 45 minutes technically, but now it went down to like 42 minutes and some change. So for that 42 minutes and 30 seconds, we have to tell stories. Not, And you don't need only need stories, we need music to go with those stories. So a lot of times, you know, it's, I hate the word one hit wonders, but let's be honest, there are some one hit wonders. We can't take someone who had one or two hits and try to fulfill 42 minutes of storytelling based off of music, you know? And the whole purpose of Unsung, and, I, and I'm happy that Unsung, that we was able to kind of move towards more so what the fans like more, more than just what actually hit the Billboard charts. Because there are some songs that are fan favorites that never was a top 10, top 100, a hot this, you know, RB, you know, so, so there's a lot of songs that fans love and know and have real meaning to them that now we're able to highlight those stories, highlight those songs and tell those stories. So with Chucky, the only thing that kept saying was, oh, he don't have enough hits. You know, how are we going to tell a story about his music, his hit songs over the course of a whole episode? So what I did was I took I took what they would call his hit songs. So we had what, two or three, according to them. Yeah. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to be like, okay, wait, well, Chucky's not just an artist. He's a music director. He's a producer. He's a writer. He's in a, you know what I'm saying? He's a, he arranged shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, you want to you play that role? I said, okay, so we'll take his hit songs, according to you. <laughs> we throw in the element of, who his godfather was, who he's attached to. And then we also will put in the work he's done with Troop. You know, so now, now we now we are now building layers. And not only that, let's get into the musical director. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Janet Jackson, you know, Tina Turner, you know, uh Lionel Richie. So I'm like, okay, so now I took all this information and I threw it at him. I said, now what you gotta say? <laughs> they came they came back and was like, go ahead and do it. So I was like, damn, okay. But that just goes to show you that we can build layers. We can build layers. We can build layers. But we still have to have the music to go with that. So no matter what story we tell him, if I'm telling his upbringing, I talk about his childhood. We talk about going to school. And then I go into his first band, which was um, Tease, right? Tease, yeah. So that's when I hit up Kipper. You know, like, hey, 
we got to talk about Chucky in the in the group. Like, what you know what I'm saying? So that was one song. You know what I'm saying? So now now we already got one out the gate. You know that first act always got to have one song in it, and that was the song. And then by the time we moved forward, we were just cruising. And you know, I kind of I kind of wish that we would have a spinoff version of Unsung, which is why I created Closer Look because there's so many artists with great stories. And people want to hear their stories. And we don't have to tell 45 minutes. Let's just do 25 minutes. Let's do 30 minutes. Let's shorten it, shorten it up. But don't discredit these people, these artists, and all this talent. Because to your standards, they don't have these hit records. You know, so that was that was one thing I wanted to create. And I'm hoping to still create that to where it's not something that's called a one-hit wonder. It's just something that we still celebrate these artists. Because some people, to be honest, that one-hit wonder... They still living out that today. You know what I'm saying? They still doing better than the people who had these hits. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but the downfall to that is when you get that one song and you and it's so big, you never duplicate. You know, you know, you know how it is. You never duplicate that song. People consider it's a it's a failure, you know. And I ran across that a lot of times, and that's why I like my job because I not only approach stuff as a producer, I produce stuff as as Isaac, a human being, you know, a person my mama raised, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, there, there's there's a lot of stories that, that go with these episodes that we can't talk about, you know, but I, I, I do like the, the transparency that these artists go, you know, when they sit down and talk to us, you know, they, they open up, you know, it's like sometimes a lot of artists hold this stuff in for years and it's all about how you ask your questions, you know, and once they feel like they come, like you, <laughs> hey, I'm throwing you up here, dog, put you on the spot. Even interviewing you, like you were vulnerable, you know what I'm saying? I asked you certain questions that you probably wasn't expecting me to ask, you know, about your friendship with Chucky and what Chucky had meant to you. And you and you had a moment, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't expecting that stuff. You were just coming to support Chucky in this documentary. But, you know, that kind of stuff is like, I, I take so much pride in knowing that you trust me, people trust me with their stories. So when I go to the network with this finished product, I don't just hand it off, I, I'm, I'm still attached to it all the way through. Because at the end of the day, if something comes back, y'all not going to the network, y'all gonna be like, where that fucking, where that, where that where Isaac at? He the one did this, you know what I'm saying? So I take I take that into consideration, man. I take all that into consideration because I don't want nobody coming after me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't satisfy everybody, but if you if you live the right way and you do it the right way and you do what's right and you honest about what you're doing, then hey. So nowadays I let people talk. I'm like, hey, that didn't come out of my mouth, that came out of your mouth. <laughs> so you want to keep talking, go, hey, I'm listening. Hey, I'll be your sounding board, you know, but I, I really appreciate all the stuff I've like I've done over thirty episodes of Unsung and I honestly can say I can pick up the phone or get on social media and reach out to every single person I've talked to and say hello or they say hello to me, ask how I'm doing, and vice versa, because I take pride in what I do. And that's, that's what got me, not just this one, but three more on top of that. You know what I'm saying? So to be able to be have four awards based off the work that we do, it's like, I never would have thought that. You know, I was like, you know, this, yeah, I never would have thought that. You know what I'm saying? So... Bro, you getting all kinds of standing ovations, man. For, you know, <laughs> this, this is just not me, man. This is a lot of people standing up, man. Just, just showing you love, man. I'm, I'm not gonna keep you, man. But it's like I, I want to ask you: Have you ever, have you ever had the experience of approaching a like an artist that you wanted to have on unsung, and they said something like to you, like, "Ah, uh, no, because you know I'm not unsung. I'm still relevant." Um, I'm not this. No, we're not unsung. Cause when you do unsung, that's like you're over. You're washed up. You know. No, we're not doing that because we we we're. You know what I'm saying? Have Have you ever yeah. experienced that with All artists? Time, and, and, and okay, so All let's time. let's talk a little bit about that. And why is that so far from the truth? Because I don't agree with that at all. So go ahead, man. All right. Right, and, and real quick about that, that was the main reason why I started my series of Closer Look. Because even changing the name, like people love what we do. Don't get it don't get it wrong. They love what we do, they love the storytelling, they love how we put it together. They hate the name. They just hate the name. But if you go back to the beginning of Unsung, those episodes were truly unsung. 
DeBarge, Donnie Hathaway. You know what I'm saying? So those are real unsung stories. And in the first couple of seasons, <clears throat> you know, it dealt with people who didn't reach the height of their careers because of death, because of drugs, um, bands breaking up, bad management deals, bad record deals. So the, the start of unsung was truly unsung. But if people pay attention to the meaning of unsung, it really means unrecognized, uncelebrated. That's not saying you didn't make it. It's saying that you just haven't been, you know what I'm saying? You haven't been recognized by the masses. You know what I'm saying? You haven't been celebrated by the people who should be celebrating you. And that's what we do. So there's a list of people I can name to this day that's still be talking shit about Hassan. But it's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's their opinion. You know, it's not saying that they didn't make it or they washed up or they didn't do this. It's like, let us tell your story. Let's celebrate you. Let us celebrate you. We can't help that unsung is the brand. We can't help that is the name. And don't get it wrong, there are some real unsung artists out there. You know, don't get it wrong, there are. But the people that we reached out to, like we reached out to, I, I, I'm not afraid to say her name because she be talking shit about us. But um, Stephanie Mills, she hates us. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she would get on social media and talk about that song. But we have to respect it. You know, we don't reach out to her anymore. You know, and she was offended by us doing that. And it, but it wasn't, you know, it was all about celebrating these artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, we wanted to do a, a, a song on Luther Vandross. And it wasn't to say Luther wasn't Luther. It was like, this. we want to celebrate Luther. You know what I'm saying? Unsung presents Luther Vandross. So I don't know what we try. We try to put our own little spin on it. But people still would just push back, you know, um, same thing with Tevin Campbell. Tevin Campbell was supposed to do Unsung, you know, and he knew what Unsung was. It wasn't, you know, that he had to change your heart and then wants to flip it around and talk about Unsung. I was like, that's not the case. That's not what really happened, dude. You know what I'm saying? So we, we did it all the time, you know, and as a producer, my job is to convince you or let you know, like, hey, we still want to tell your story. You still have a story to tell. There's still fans out there that would love to hear your story. That would love to hear your music. You know, and a lot of times we, now, with the, especially with the older artists, when we tell their stories and people hear their music and connect to a newer generation, their streams go up. You know, they start getting, they start making money. You know what I'm saying? And then people reach out to them, do shows. People are getting booked more. People are getting having more collaborations with younger producers. You know what I'm saying? So it has it has its positives to it too. You know what I'm saying? And but again, people look at it differently. And some people would never have a you know some people would never be celebrated. Let's just face it. You know, unless they do it themselves. But no, like VH1 and MTV and you know, not even BT. It's not is you know going after our legacy artists. You know what I'm saying? That's still out there making you know sounding great, looking great, doing tours. No one is telling their stories. You know, they they can they can be on social media doing it themselves, but no one is doing it for them. You know, so I think that you know a lot of people still have that that mentality, and we've been able to convince some people once we really tell them our motives, and once we break it down to them how we want to tell their stories. But they have to face it. Like unsung is unsung is this: you 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 growing up musically, you hit your record deal, you hear something happened. It can be anything. It don't have to be drugs. It don't have to be, it can be a death in the family that caused you to step away from music to focus on family. To us, that is our unsung point where everything dropped and slowed down. And then it came back up. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So there's no there's no hidden secret to it. And you have to not make it. You have to have some devastation in your in your life or some tragedy. It's all about you were here, something happened, and then here you are again. Even if we're still climbing, to us, that's still a story. You know, are we all about storytelling and layers and that we can attach a story behind each part of your career, each milestone, then that makes a great episode for us. Man, brother, you hit the, you hit everything out the, out the park, man. You're hitting all the points in my brain and everything. Um, uh, for, for me... It, it, it even could be a, a thing of just the, the change of culture, man. The past 30 years, we, there's been a big, it's a, a change in the musical culture and musical world is so different right now. You know, it's like, 
a lot of that stuff is unrecognized that 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 we did thirty years ago, just because it's a sign. It's a new. It's a new millennials, new generation. I mean, that was th sometimes thirty years ago. It's 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 sometimes they feel that it's forgotten about, or you know, it's it's a thing of the past. Um, and so they're not getting, like you said, they're not getting their flowers just simply because everything has changed, man. Everything from the way we come on, man. I don't got to tell the way we listen to music, buy records, streaming, everything. Everything has changed. So it could just be a thing with that. I do know that um, when Unsung, let's go back a little bit when it first, like the first few episodes, a lot of artists I talk to, they will, they say, well, you know. Um, they always want a, 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 a tragical moment in in the story. Like they want to so they want to show you on the drugs, and they want to show you sniffing the pipe, or or be, getting beat up by your spouse, or or you know, or mission shows because you can't. They want to show that segment and unsung. So that's why I will never do it because I don't have those moments. I don't have this. They always looking for it, and it seemed like maybe. Um, like in the earlier episodes, when you would watch that, you would see those type of moments, you know, um, to where, OK, now the tragedy coming. Oh, here's this segment. And so a lot of people are kind of turned off by that. Um, what, what, do you, what do you say to that? Because now, like, because everybody doesn't have that story. And man, now, since you've been like doing it, dude, it's a it's a change. It is about celebrating the artist. And you know one thing I hate? I hate when people say, man, Chucky Booker, man, he's, man, he's underrated. Man, I hate that word. That word makes no sense to me. It All just, right. oh man, he's underrated. What the hell does that mean? I don't, just tell me, I know what you're trying to say, but the context of it just doesn't make sense to me. Because right. he's not underrated. He's one of the greatest in the world. When he was doing it to that level 30 years ago, was he overrated then when he was sitting on, man, this is just change. He's still doing his thing. So this is a way, I tell you, when, when Chucky did, when this episode came, man, everything about his numbers just shot through the roof, man. We were getting called, and we're still getting calls to perform his show. You know, Chucky's busy. His schedule is just so crazy. You know, so we get calls all the time about people who saw the unsung show and want to book Chucky. And I'm like, man, you're right, man. It, it, it elevates, you know, it elevates people's careers to me because now you're giving them a worldwide platform to let people know what they're doing now. And a lot of them are doing extremely well, man. Yeah, yeah. Extremely well. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, so <clears throat> to go back to the first comp the first example you made about the guy talking about drugs. I mean, let's be honest. The art, the, the beginning of our son was artists in the, the 60s and 70s. I mean, you know what was happening back then. You know what I'm saying? And these were not our words. These came out, out of the artist's mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like even uh, going back to the DeBarge family, they talked about being hooked on drugs. Uh, first, it started with pain, pain medicine and stuff like that. So visually in storytelling, if someone says they went through a stint of doing a show and then after the show, they'll maybe go back in the room and the dress room and sniff coke. Visually, as a storyteller, we're going to show some people smoking drugs. I mean, it, it, that's just how TV works. When you, you tell a story and you show visuals, you know, do, does it happen a lot of time? No. But doing those artists in those days, you know, they talked about doing drugs. That was a normal thing. So when we highlight those artists in their careers, whether it was a party drug or whether they got hooked on it, they still talked about it. Whether they talked about doing drugs, whether they talked about depression, whether they talked about mental health things, whether they talked about family. You know, as a storyteller, and when you're telling a story, we always look for that visuals. Whatever you, if you say, man, I remember walking down the street and seeing this car on fire, and I just thought it like, man, should I put it out? Should I write a song? We're gonna show you walking down the street and we're gonna show a car on fire. It's just the art of storytelling. So when these artists in the beginning would talk about using drugs and whatever their storyline was, we would take that those stories and when we get in post-production, we start building, we start building a scene. That's just, you know, if it was a radio, radio show, then we just go off the words. But now it's a TV show and we are focusing on what they're saying. How can we draw the audience in with visuals other than just leaving the camera on them the whole time? But sometimes 
the passion and you know and hurt and just them is good enough for us. So we won't even cut to that. So it just depends. But yes, yeah, some art like Chucky didn't do drugs. Like Chucky had a great show we did with no drugs. You know, and it, again, when I talk about that this and the up and down of unsung, you know, Chucky, it was the bad record deal. When he left, you know, he left his manager. You know, the death of Barry White. You know, we you know, he kind of need, needed needed some time, you know what I'm saying? So those are, you know, we can find different moments. And if an artist don't have that moment, that don't mean that we want to do their unsung. Again, because for us, they could have they could have left with Grammys and Grammys and Grammys and went out to start a whole new family and never came back to music. To us, that's the that's the way, you know. You left music to start a to be a, a wife or a husband and focus on family. That's not a bad thing. That's just the level of emotion that we display in our episodes. So People did, you know, people say, you know, oh, they we show this and show that, but you know, once they get a grip of production and TV and storytelling, then they, they understand. And at the same time, we're not making these stories up. We're not adding, oh, Chucky was doing drug. Show a picture of that crack pipe. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, if the artist is telling us a story about their life and what they grew up, whether they grew up in the hood, they grew up in a project, what we do? We show a picture of the projects. We show little kids out in the projects. So it's just a matter of adding visuals to their stories, you know. And again, every every artist don't have that in their in their in their storylines. But when you think about artists that you know performed in the seventies and sixties and toured drugs and then alcohol and then you know <clears throat> did DJ Quick, he's from Compton. He didn't get mad that we showed gang bangers because he was aff- affiliated with that. You know what I'm saying? You know so. It's just, it's just about the storytelling. Like, Will Downey didn't have any any drug issues, you know, when I told his story. You know, his, his up and down was, you know, um, the death of his, his father, you know, death of a family, and then him not getting the accolades and record deal because he was he was labeled a spin-off version of Luther Vandross. You know what I'm saying? So that was his, that was his wave of, you know, serving through the industry and trying to make a name and lane for himself. So yeah, I mean, we get we get that all the time, and I, I like having those conversations with people, man. You know, <laughs> I'm like, bring it on, man. What you got? <laughs> and then I, then I don't mind breaking it down to them. Like I would break it down to them, and, and and I was I would if I'm busy, I would take time to break it down to them, so they would know, so they won't have this bad perception of what unsung gets. So, you know, I don't know. It don't it don't have to be my episode. It could be my friend's episode. Like I take pride in that show because I know what it means to people. Like even I would have like an unsung like I don't even have any more unsung t shirts or hats because every time I wear it I end up taking it off and giving it to somebody because they just love the show and I was standing wherever I'm at and have a random conversation with a stranger about their favorite episode and you know this behind the scenes stuff and just they just want to talk and, and talk about the show you know so nice no, I, I love it man but yeah that's to ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, man, I'm not gonna hold you no longer, man. I'm, a, I'm a brother. I, I really appreciate. Just real quick, it's a total. It's a different show than the one show they had like several years ago. Some sh- I think it was called like Where Are They Now or something like that, right? That that show Where Are They Where Are They Now? I watched that. It was like a 30 minute thing. I think yeah, back in the day, yeah. Where Are They Now? And to me, that's a whole different thing, man. It was those, yeah. those shows were completely different, man. But, but I, I, I feel if your story is your story, I love hearing about what happened to you know what happened to Hendrix and the Temptations and you know it's part of our history, man. And it is their story. So, yeah. hey, man, if it's your story, don't be ashamed of it. Live this, live whether it's this or that. If you, it's a part of your testimony. And I just love, man, the fact that you're clearing some stuff up. It's like, you guys don't look for these things. If your thing is, if your story is beautiful, squeaky clean, you ain't got no tragedies, you know, that's what we will hit all of that. But if you want to talk about something else, it's up to you. We'll, we'll capture your story. We're just not making stuff up. Like yeah, I mean, stuff. I mean I'm telling you, man, <laughs> again, some stuff, some stuff we literally have to leave out because, wow, People get so comfortable, they just talk. We're like, whoa, whoa, this ain't, this not TMZ, man. We ain't just, you know, it's not Jerry Springer. We're not doing that shit. Like, back, back down. But yeah, I mean, if it's their story, you know, we don't, we don't force anything. I would never, I would never tell someone. But we also, this is another key thing, which 
it's just it's just a, a thing with journalism and just you know a reporter being a reporter type you know situation. If it's out there, if it's out there in the, in the, the social media is out there, in the papers is out there in the world, and people know about it, we do we will address it. I would not let you leave that chair without you addressing it. You don't have to go into it. You don't have to give me every single detail, but you have to address it. So if you were accused of domestic abuse and it's out there and we're sitting you down for your documentary and as a producer, we don't ask you that question, that discredits us. So you can say, I don't want to talk about that. We still have to cover our asses and ask that question. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it's like, but you don't have to talk about it, but we still have to ask that question. And, and I don't know if you ever seen, I can't remember what episode that happened in, but we will put in there such and such refuse to talk about these allegations. That's it. Cause at the end of the day, we have to, we have to maintain our respect level as a, as, as a show. Just like you gotta be, you know, you can, you more than welcome to, you know, respect your silence, but we have to let people know that we did ask that question. They just refused to answer. So it just, it just discredits us. I was like, oh, I didn't ask that question. Oh, how can we be this? You know, so it's, it's tricky, but we try to cover our angles because, again, we want the respect of the artists. That's my main goal. Like, the network can get mad at some stuff. I can live with that. But at the end of the day, without the artists, we don't have a show. You know what I'm saying? So my job as a producer is to make, is to have, to build that trust in them when I'm telling their stories. Like I said, at the end of the day, they come back to me. Yeah. So now, whenever whenever I do an episode, whenever I do an episode, I ask for a rough cut and I send it to the artist. I'm like, watch this by yourself. Watch it with some friends or your manager. Or no, watch it with your manager or your team first. And then later, watch it by yourself. Just sit and watch it by yourself. And you tell me how you feel. And just know, I, I'm not, I can't change everything, but if something's in there that you just strongly disagree with, or it, or it's something we did wrong, or the way we chopped it up and did the transition and added the music, and you know they made it look more dramatic than it really is. Let me know, and then I would try to address those. I, I never put out an episode without letting the artist look at it first, gotcha. because I can be, I can be wrong sometimes. Like my storytelling can be off, you know, because I'm sometimes I'm looking just for the producer aspect of it, and you know, so Chucky would tell you, I sent that shit to Chucky. I said, hey man, watch this. Send, send Boy Russ home. You watch that shit by yourself, man. Like, watch it so you can sit with it and and, and you and take it all in. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So they they watched it. I got the approval. Right. And we was able to move forward to the next step, which was finalized. But once once it goes to the network and they see it, it's a wrap. Wow. <laughs> they don't. They they're not as sensitive as I am. They're like, nah, this is good TV. Nah, nah, we're keeping that in. Like, wow. You know. <laughs> Nah, he gonna call me though, man. He gonna call me. <laughs> so, nah, I, I take I take pride in it, and I take you know, and everything I do, and, and that's why I feel like in this industry, my network has grown. You know, of uh, uh, friends and people that believe in me and trust what I'm doing. And again, when I called you, I had that nonprofit event yeah. happening in L.A. And you yeah. guys were in Sacramento. Yeah. I was like a two minute phone call. You said I got you. And I was like, wait, wait I didn't give you all the details. He's like I got you. I was like, it's in L.A., man. <laughs> you know, and you came out. You guys came out, and with Sean Rayford, yeah, yeah. Sean so it's like, Sean. so that, those kind of relationships. You know, I have my friends I grew up with. I have my basketball buddies, and I have people I met through work. And it's like they go hand in hand, man. Like I love all y'all, man. It's like, yeah. you know, so yeah. Bruh, man, we covered so much, brother. I, I really appreciate you. Hey, Isaac, so, so what do you got going right now, real quick, before I let you go? Just what's the main, the key things you got going right now? Um, So I just finished. I'm, now I'm a filmmaker. Well, I did, this is my third film, but I, I wrote a psychological thriller slash horror film. And, you know, I, I wrote it back in 2019. And I just put it to the side and for some reason last year I was like how much would it really cost me to really do this movie you know and I put I did the budget and I was like huh I think I can afford this and then I was like no I'm, I'm going to go out and shoot it I'm just going to do it I've never done it before I never did horror thrillers um, I took a chance on myself and I went out and did it I wrote it I shot it and it's done I'm having my, my film screening this Monday in Hollywood and I have over 
300 RSVPs coming. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I don't need all y'all to come. <laughs> but again, that goes to show you that when you do good things and people like your hustle and they like your drive, your determination, they will come out and support what you're doing. You know, I don't know if everyone's going to like it, but people are taking their time to come out and see it. And I mean, that's like just the best feeling. So I'm nervous. I'm excited. And it's just another another step on another stamp on my book of things I've done, you know. So, cool. yeah, that's what's it's my family, man. man congratulations, Thanks. man! Wish you all the wish you all the best, man. And I know it's going to be great. I, and um, you know, um, dude, I really admire you, man. What you're doing and, and, and where you are right now in your young life, man, it's really dope. Just keep pushing, man. Keep doing your thing. And, um, man, I'm just glad to be able to call you my friend and my brother, man, for real. Listen, tell Thank everybody you. how they can how they can uh, reach you, man, how they can contact you. Uh, so Instagram, I am Ike Taylor. So not Isaac Taylor, but Ike Taylor on Instagram. And on Facebook, I'm Isaac Taylor. So that's how you can find me. Brother, okay, I got to ask you this question. I ask everybody this question. You got Mount Rushmore. I'm not sure how to ask this because I can ask it from a director, from a, uh, a, a, a writer, I think a producer, right? You got four producers in the move in the in the movie uh, uh, industry that you're going to put on your Mount Rushmore. Who are they going to be? Your best producers. Ah. I think mine's are a mix of producers slash directors. So I would go with um, Spike Lee, um, John Singleton, um, Quentin Tarantino, and I don't know who else. Oh, man. That's the first time someone asked me that question. <laughs> um, it worked, man. We got him. We got him. <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say, Bill, I would say Bill Duke. I, I, oh. I worked on. I did an unsung Hollywood on Bill Duke, which was a different version of unsung, but this is focused on film and actors. So, wow. um, yeah, I would say Bill Duke. Uh, I learned a lot from, from interviewing Bill Duke and the way he approaches things and stuff like that, and. I also got a chance to speak to John Singleton by, while doing that episode because we interviewed John Singleton for Bill Duke. So, oh, Robert Townsend. We all about Robert Townsend. Uh, I respect what he's done and what he continues to do. Yeah, but there's a lot of people, man. I never, you know what? No one ever asked me that. That's crazy. Well, listen, man. I'm a, I'm gonna put my I'm a, I'm gonna put my pick on there, man, because you know I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Isaac Tyler. I either Ike. Either Ike, man, don't make me start calling you Ike, cause I don't, you know. When I think about Ike, there's only one Ike that come to my mind. That's Ike and T. <laughs> but I'm gonna put Isaac Taylor on my Mount Rushmore of film producers, man, and just television producers, because, bro, I know you, and I watch you. I'm watching you do it like in real time, and man, I, I'm just really gonna, you know, the next 50 years is gonna be great for you, brother. I, I probably won't be here, but man, listen. I wish you the best, man, and um, keep doing your thing. And, um, dude, I'm just honored, man, and proud that you took this time, man. And congratulations on the three the three Emmys, man, and the awards and everything. You don't speak on none of that stuff, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You you talk, you, you, you have conversations with all of these big people. And, you know, but when you turn the camera around on yourself, bruh, bruh you're right there, man. So, dude, I wish you the best. Keep dominating. And, uh, man, to hear your story is incredible. And thanks for, for sharing it with me, man, bro. And, um, man, I, I, you know, I wish you all the best on your, your film. And uh, let me know how the, how the, uh, how the turnout is on, on, and how it went, man. I'm, I'm curious to, to, I'm sorry I can't make it, man, but I know it's going to be great. And, uh, you know, and, and you, you, you know, I'm, it's going to be incredible for you. And I can't wait to see it in the theaters on, on Netflix or whatever you're going to you do with it, man. I can't wait. All right. And every time I flip the script, make me all emotional over here, man. Man, no, <laughs> bro. Come on. Get back on me. I got that. I got to get that. You did it to me, man. You did it to me. Hey, man, I was so glad you cut that part out, man. I was like, man, I hope hey, they don't. 
Hey, hey, you remember that? I don't know if you remember. Uh, it was the Dave Chappelle episode where he was interviewing somebody. It was it was a comedic a- aspect of it, but the guy started crying, and the the guy crying was like, "Cut the camera!" And Dave Chappelle was like, "Keep it rolling." <laughs> <laughs> No, but I appreciate you, man. You were good too, man. I, I knew that from day one, and you know, thank you, man. You, it was it was definitely a joy, um, and thank you for having me on your show. And yeah, you know, we we go we go keep going, man. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. We're gonna work together. I mean, uh, I mean, you're right. I, I didn't know that, so now I know my next film. I'm hitting you up. I'm like, this is what I got. We go we go start from the beginning and just you know. So I'm here. Make a- I would love that, man. That's where that's the world I've been living in. For, for a couple of years now, so I'm excited about it. So, man, yeah, anything you need from me, I would love, you know, I'll show you some of my work, what I'm doing, and got a few things coming out. Actually, this month of October, some things coming yeah, out. So, yeah. yeah, so, um, but listen, man, enough about me, brother. Listen, man, I love you, man. I appreciate you, little brother. Too, and I hope to see you soon, man. Y'all, show your love. Oh, wait a minute, I almost messed up. Go like and subscribe to the page. Like and subscribe. Uh-huh. Bring. That's what, a thousand, right? Full clip. Go like and subscribe <laughs> to the page, the page, please, so my producer will stop trying to find me on my own damn show. How does that no. work? <laughs> <laughs> so listen, listen, man, y'all show your love for but this this young genius already, just a great dude, my little brother. Y'all show your love for the one and the only Mr. Isaac Taylor. Isaac, thank you, brother. Yeah. Appreciate it, Talk to you later, man. Oh, 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 o